Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 8 of the AI series, we're going to implement homing bullets. This isn't strictly AI, but I didn't feel like in the last video we went into enough detail about how bullets mechanics work. We implement it only where it'll go in a straight line based on rigid body physics, which actually I use in my game, and I think it works really well for that use case. But there are other use cases, and we didn't go into any of those really in that video and how to cover those. There are some use cases that homing bullets work for. You can do on mobile, it's really popular to have auto aim. Basically, you're, you run around and then just whatever stuff comes towards you, you turn and shoot and bullets go towards them. And that's kind of it. So that's a really popular one. And also magic effects usually have homing capabilities because they're magic. So those are two that are really popular that we can't implement with what we did last time. So in this video, we're going to check that out. And we're also going to add in different effects, movement effects onto these bullets. The three key things that we're going to go over in this video is one, how to make the homing bullet. So it'll follow the target wherever it goes, unless it hits something on the way. Two, we're going to add in noise. So that way that you don't just have perfectly straight line bullets. And three, we're going to define a position curve so you can control how quickly or slowly your bullet travels at different parts of its path towards the target. I had a lot of fun messing with all of the controls that come in on a homing bullet. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with it too. Don't just take the values that I put though. Really take some time, play with it, see how they work all and interact with each other and find out how it works best for your game. To achieve this, we need to create a new script called homing bullet. Before we get into writing the homing bullet class, we need to refactor the bullet class to be more subclassable. Again, I don't know if that's a word. We'll begin by transforming most of the private variables and functions to protected. We'll definitely need the disable method name to be protected. I don't think we'll do anything on awake, so we'll leave that as private for now. We need to redo the on enable, the on trigger enter, and the disable function all to be protected. On enable and on trigger enter both need to be virtual, so we can override them in the homing bullet class. And we're going to add a new public virtual void spawn. That's going to take a vector 3 forward and an int damage. We'll assign this dot damage to be the damage parameter, and we'll do rigid body dot add force forward times move speed with the force mode velocity change. With this function, we are removing the responsibility from the bullet spawning to make this bullet go forward. We're moving that responsibility to the bullet so the bullet knows how it should move forward, not the spawning class. And if we think about a homing bullet, the homing bullet also is going to need to know where it's going to go, meaning what the target is. So we're going to add that to this function signature. And then on the bullet level, we'll add a protected transform target. And again, assign the this.transform target to be the target that's passed in. That should be all we need to do to the bullet. Let's hop to the range attack radius, where we will remove the assigning of bullet.damage whenever we're spawning the bullet, and instead call bullet.spawn with agent transform forward damage and the target damageable.get transform. Now let's open the homing bullet. We'll make a private animation curve position curve. This will be how we manage where the bullet is between the target and the spawn location. I'll also add a private coroutine homing coroutine, which will be the coroutine that manages the position of the bullet. Then we'll implement the spawn function, public override void spawn with the vector three forward int damage and transform target. We're not going to call the base class because we don't want the rigid body to control our movement. Instead, we'll assign this.damage and this.target to the parameters. We'll check if the homing coroutine is not null and stop it. Then we'll set the homing coroutine to be the return value of start coroutine find target. And for the simple implementation of this, we're just going to linearly interpolate from wherever we spawn to wherever the target currently is. And this will work on a moving target. That's why we need the transform target. So we can constantly be changing the destination based on wherever our target is. So we'll do vector three start position equals transform dot position. So wherever we started, we'll set float time equals zero. And while time is less than one, we'll do transform dot position equals vector three lerp passing in the start position, the target's current position, and the time. And then we'll do time plus equals delta time times move speed, and then yield return null. So we're going to add to the target position a y offset. I'm going to do target.position plus a new vector 3 with 0x, a y offset y, and a 0z. 
And then at the top level, I'll add a public float y offset, set that to one. Because again, remember that our target, our model, the zero, zero, zero position of that is in the floor. So all of our bullets will spawn at the correct height because we have the bullet spawn offset of y equals one, right? But then they'll start going down to the floor to hit the target. So that'll look a little bit weird. So we need to also have something to offset the y here. We'll also say transform.lookat target.position plus new vector three, again, zero y offset zero. So that way our bullet will be looking at the direction that it's going. Let's hop back to the Unity editor and make our homing bullet prefab. I'll drag the bullet prefab into the scene, remove the bullet script and attach the homing bullet script. I'll adjust the move speed to something like three. And actually we didn't use the position curve yet. So I'm gonna leave that alone. And then I'll drag that back down to the project panel and make it a prefab variant of the prefab of the bullet prefab. Then I'll open up the ranged enemy variant prefab and drag the homing bullet to the attack radius bullet prefab reference. I'll then remove the homing bullet prefab that we just made from the scene. And I'll adjust the enemy manager to have only one enemy spawn and make that be the ranged enemy, just so we can take a look at it a little bit easier. And then if I click play, we can see that the enemy shoots bullets at me pretty quickly. And as I move, they still follow me and will make contact with me unless they're obstructed by some world geometry. I can also slow them down because three is pretty fast. I'll change it to something like one, just so you can see them all moving a little bit more clearly. So here, as I move around, you can see them hitting the walls. So the homing part seems like it works pretty well. So having homing bullets is cool, but they're kind of boring when they go in a straight line. We can also add some flair to our bullets to make them a little bit more interesting. Let's open up the homing bullet class again. At the top, we'll add public vector two min noise and public vector two max noise. Let's hop over to the find target coroutine. We need a couple more variables here to be able to calculate the noise correctly. So I'm gonna make a vector two noise, which will be the X value will be a random value between min noise X and max noise X. So we'll do new vector two random range min noise dot x comma max noise dot x and the y value will be the same just using min noise dot y and max noise dot y. We need to do that calculation to find out what percentage of x and z makes up the full quote 2d x value. So to do that we need to calculate the tangent vector to our direction vector and the y axis. So first we'll calculate the full direction vector which is doing again our target position minus start position. We've done that a couple times now in this AI series and the smooth look at video. I'm doing it slightly different because we have that Y offset. We're going to do new vector three target dot position dot X. The Y value will be target dot position dot Y plus the Y offset. And then we'll do the Z as just target position Z. And then we'll subtract out the start position because that start position has that Y offset included. Then we'll make a horizontal noise vector. This is going to be the tangent vector to the direction vector and vector three up. We'll do vector three dot cross bullet direction vector and vector three up. And then we'll get the normalized vector there. So that way it's the unit vector, which will give us our percentages between X and Z that equal our total X movement. So the cross product of two vectors results in a third vector, which is perpendicular or tangent to the two input vectors. You can see this cool graphic from the uni documentation kind of showing what's going to happen here. So in, in this case, A would be our direction vector, B would be the vector three up that we're passing. And the result is this tangent vector that we want. And you can see that would be on the X or Z axis, depending on how you look at it or a combination of X and Z. Then we'll make a float noise position, set that to zero by default. And then inside the while loop, we'll calculate the noise position and I haven't defined a noise curve. So we'll go back up to the top, say public animation curve, noise curve. We'll make it like a parabola, which gives us a nice little curve on our bullets, as you can see here. We'll do noise position equals noise curve dot evaluate time. We're calculating the position on that curve that we defined at the given time. So obviously your noise curve should start at zero and end at one. And to bring it all together, using the vector three lerp gives us our position along a straight line between our start position and the target's current position at the given time. What we're gonna do then is add in our position along the noise curve at the same time, utilizing the noise vector that we calculated, which 
sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. What we're going to do is just new vector three horizontal noise vector dot x times the noise position, which is where we are on that curve, times the noise dot x that we generated. Noise position for the y, we're going to do just noise position times noise dot y because we already know what our vertical noise vector is, and that's one. Then the noise position times the horizontal noise vector dot z times noise dot x. So we created a new vector three that is our noise offset basically, and we're adding that to our actual linear position along this direction vector between our start location and our target's current position. If we hop back to the Unity editor, we'll select the homing bullet variant, and now we're going to take in the noise curve. So I told you I was going to make a simple parabola. I've defined the shape before. If you want to see what is it, what it is, it's just at 0.5 time, I set the value to be 1 and kind of have it a flat handles and flat handles on both ends. If I then click play, we can see the enemy starts shooting at me and these bullets kind of go off to the side a lot and then a little bit up or down too. In the scene view, you can see that they follow that parabolic curve pretty well, always looking at my player and they either they go really far out or sometimes less far out because there's that randomness attached to it, right? If we want to get really crazy, what we can do is select the ranged enemy scriptable object and update the attack delay to be something like 0.01. .01, so she'll shoot 100 bullets a second. <laughs> and we can kind of see the, the shape of that parabolic curve a, a little bit better with this because there's so many of them. We can visualize that and we can see all of the bullets are still traveling to my player all the time with a bunch of noise. So some of them go far out, some of them are more straight. It looks pretty cool, I think. We can adjust also the curve at runtime even to get a different effect. I put 0.15, which is a little bit too high because you can see that not all the bullets are fully reaching the end. So if we put it something to maybe 0.05, they should start reaching me fully. Let's pick up some of these bullets that were missed. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And they're not all coming directly to, well, they're not all making it, but I think you get the idea there. They're not all going to the exact same point on my player. They have kind of a little variance there. You can adjust the curve too, so they shoot out to the side fast. You can just play with this curve to see what looks best for your game. All right, so we've gone through the entire demo and we haven't used this position curve. So let's implement that now. Let's open up the homing bullet class again and we'll take a look at the find target coroutine. And you saw this whole time we've been using time as the third parameter in vector three lurk. And that makes it linearly interpolate from point A to point B based on that time value between zero and one. But what we can do is use this animation curve position curve and evaluate that based on the time to give us a different effect whenever this bullet's going between them. And I'll show you some examples in the editor of how changing this position curve affects the bullet and how it traverses between the two positions. So I'm going to quickly reset up the scene where I have none of the obstacles in the way just so we can really see these bullets and also change the enemy spawner to again only spawn the one ranged enemy that uses the homing bullet. And we'll also make sure that that homing bullet has a position curve set. I'll choose this kind of S curve so that way it's not linear because you can define a linear curve here and it's the exact same as not using an animation curve like we had it before. But we'll use this S1 by default so you can kind of see a little bit of difference there. And if you look really closely you can see that they kind of slowly start and then quickly in the middle speed up and then again slow down as they come closer to the player. But we can adjust this so it's really more obvious and do something where it very quickly comes near the one value and so it'll shoot very quickly out from the enemy but then slow down as it gets close to the player. Here you see it goes very, very quickly and then really slow as it gets close to the player.
and we can do the inverse where it takes a really long time to get started and then very quickly shoots towards the player. So you've probably seen effects like this in different games where somebody's maybe casting a spell and it kind of hovers around them a little bit and then shoots quickly. You can achieve a similar effect with exactly what we've done here with the homing bullet. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video. Adding in homing bullets adds in a large variety of gameplay mechanics into your game. You have things like homing bullets for your player or your enemies, you can have spells, and you can add in a bunch of visual effects on top of these motion effects that we just added to really increase immersion. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing this into your game as a result of watching this series, drop a comment down below, and I'll see you on the next video.